Rose garden with an Arizona sunset. With the jackalope sun for a berry trap. Gonna live down on the open road with burgers and pine on the moon. So long I forty this guy's bugging out. Evening shadows at the rock in 66 times.
people who raised me had no compunctions about throwing down the plow or leaving their jobs to join up to go fight the evil empire. This is the one thing that will leave a man-sized blueprint on my brain for the rest of my life. My uncle Lemoyne was 17 years old when he hit Omaha Beach. He lied about his age to get into the army, not to get out. My dad was in the Navy too, never saw combat because he had a heart murmur. But he begged even though he could have gotten a, an excuse written by the medical examiners. He begged to be in the military and uh, be an accountant for the military, what they called a comptroller in the Navy, and that's what he did. Uh, my other uncle, as I explained to you, and upon the pilot. My grandfather was chief quartermaster in Pearl Harbor when the bombs came. The real ghost. He wasn't on the ships at the time. The quartermaster is somebody who deals with all the supplies. Basically the PX. And uh, his brother, who was not in the Navy, had a house on uh, Honolulu Beach, which wasn't the sign of a rich man back then. A lot of the officers had the houses off the beach. But his brother came over there and built that house, and when he was off the ships, he was in there. When the bombs came, he didn't run and hide. He stood on top of the roof and took pictures of his Kodak 8mm camera, one of the first ones that came out. about three years old, my dad took a job working for my granddad who had retired from the Navy. So I grew up part of the time in Honolulu. When I was three, we moved to Honolulu. Dad wore a low hush. Hawaii called, and who was I stopping? I think I bought a new toy drum and dropped it down into the mouth of some volcano. Way out in Honolulu. He did card tricks, told us, boys, this deck is back. Told us dirty jokes about the Naval Corps. And how one day the airplanes came and started a war. And how he buried buddies in long trenches. Way out in Honolulu. Whoa, it used to be so nice. When he took us on his knee, he said, boys,
But at last, we had to move back to the States. Back to the land of natural gas and rattlesnakes. <laughs> Hawaii said goodbye and who's ever stopped it. I think I tried to find my drone and I dropped it. I thought about the bodies and the long creatures. Going back to Texas from home. You know, someday I'm going back to home. I'll wear the Aloha shirt. Baby, you wear the Aloha. Why he calls? And who are we to stop it? I think I'll buy a new toy drum and drop it down into the mouth of some volcanoes. Say thank you, Granddad.
We don't give up Forever's in my heart And in my blood Come from a long line of love Yeah. Uh... 
He said if we would give him work, he'd do the best he could. Though he didn't know straight up about a cow. So the boss he cut him out and out, kindly put him on. For he sort of like this little kid somehow. Taught him how to wrangle horses and know them all by name. Get them in by daybreak if he could. To follow the chip wagon and always hits the team. Help the Cosinero wrestle. We were camped out at Red River, the weather being fine. Down by the south side of the bend, when the northern started blowing, and we doubled up our guard. Took all hands to keep the cattle in. Little Joe the Wrangler was calmed down with the rest. Scarcely had the kid raised the herd When the cattle all stampeded Like a hailstorm long they fled And all of us were riding for the lead Beneath the streaks of lightning We could see a horse ahead Little Joe the Wrangler in the lead. He was riding old Blue Rocket with a slicker over his head, trying to check the leaders in their speed. Last they got Millen, kind of quieted down, and the extra guard back to the camp did go. One of us was missing. We knew it at a glance. Was our little Texas Jay, poor Ranger Joe. Next morning, just at daybreak, we found where a rocket fell. In the washout, 40 feet below. Beneath his horse mashed to a pulp, his spur had rung a knell. Was our little Texas Dray, poor Wrangler Joe. Little Joe the Wrangler, who Wrangler never knew. Days on the Remuda, they are done. Was a year ago last April that he rode into our camp. Just a little Texas street dog.
but his voice failed there. We did not hear his dying prayer in a narrow
Italian troubles on the oldies and drinks. Woman, I said, Woman, 
And uh, let's see. Uh, well, I hope you enjoy the film that you can look it up. On IMDB, which is the website that tells about all the films that are coming out. And then they go all the way back to the beginning of the first films. Wildfire Legend and the Cherokee Ghost Hunters. There is a tradition among Native Americans of the plains from Texas all the way to Canada that there is a ghost horse that can never be captured. They had inherited horses from the Spanish people that brought them here in the first place and became the greatest black cattle in the world and almost defeated the U.S. government. If it hadn't just been for sheer firepower, they might have done it because they certainly came close in the battle with the big horn. And to several other battles that were decisively won by Native Americans. And ultimately they were defeated by starvation because the buffalo were gone. These magnificent horses the wild horses of the West. They loved and revered and rode. There's the one thing they had in common with the cowboys. They didn't have registered quarter horses. And they were going up the Chisholm Trail. They had little runny nags they called Mustangs. Because on the back of those Mustangs, the Native Americans almost be custard. Red Fowl. Almost the, the largest fort of cavalry officers anywhere. Jim Bridger warned them they were coming. They didn't listen. Anyway. They believed that as long as there was one of these magnificent horses out there, that maybe someday they'd get the culture back. Washington Irving wrote about a pacing white stallion that he saw on the plains in the early 1800s when he went on an expedition west. And the story became so prominent P.T. Barnum put out a reward, but uh, a number of Mustangers said they saw the horse could never get a rope around it. Because they said when they would get him out to the edge of a canyon, he would jump into the darkness. And like Patrick Henry said, it was give me liberty or give me death. But then the horse would come back as a ghost to try to save somebody who was in trouble. So for the Native Americans and for a lot of cowboys, he came to symbolize salvation, rescue, being saved. Isn't it interesting that in the book of Revelation it says that when Jesus comes back he'll be on the back of a white stallion.
out running sundown I'm thinking I'm on the right track I'm writing the song as I'm riding along Keeping the sun at my back Big horse trailer and truck I can make my own luck As I ride through the sand and the sage As it gives me a rush to be bust in the brush Acting about half my age Lone cowboy I'm doing my best Lone cowboy I go everywhere west Lone cowboy With my old campfire song 